Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike Carrick Gay from Scratch, and I've been talking about this for a few days now. It is finally time to do it. We'll consider this weekend bonus content. Today, I'm checking out the Maps Bonanza Humble Bundle right now, which is basically campaign cartographer and a whole lot of assets for that. If you never heard of this, this is basically a world builder or a map editor, mainly aimed at tabletop type game creation. But after using this for a little while, I could totally see how you could use this for game development. And uh, we're going to jump in and take a look at the contents right now. Now, basically, the big thing to you're interested here is campaign cartographer. There is um, Fractal Terrain 3, but most game development tools are going to be vastly superior to this. And then the rest of this stuff is basically add-ons and styles and so on for campaign cartographer. So it gives you the ability to not only create dungeons and world maps, but modern cities, fantasy cities, Cthulian cities, 1930s or 50s style stuff. Um, even spaceships, as we are going to see in just a few minutes. It's a really powerful tool, but I also got to warn you at the same time, this is a product that's been running for quite a while, and the user interface really shows you now. Now, one question you may have is, can I use these things commercially? And as you'll see, if you read the description for the campaign cartographer, uh, three plus lifetime license, uh, you will see down here, uh, details of how to do it for your desktop, virtual desktop, Roll20, or so on. Uh, you can also use this in other design programs such as Photoshop and GIMP to create maps. You can use our high resolution assets and textures with them too. This should apply to game engines as well. And if you're wondering about commercial, well, yes, you get all software includes a 10 year download guarantee, full updates, and upgrade rights and commercial rights. So that is pretty cool stuff. So everything you're going to see here today should theoretically be usable in a game. And you can ultimately spit your maps out as um, an image file of some form, which again, we will check out. So you can use these to create maps for your game. Now here is one of the example maps in action. And you can see here, this is your typical overland style map. And you're going to see right, <laughs> right away, uh, my, uh, my computer chugged a little bit trying to pan it. So panning and zooming and that kind of stuff, it's actually quite sluggish. This is 100% software driven. So the performance is nothing to write home about. Same way if I zoom, you basically zoom out the map and yeah. Okay, so do be aware, performance is not uh, on the amazing side of the equation. Uh, at the same time, it is very resolution dependent. So I'm running this on a 4K display. Uh, if I ran this on a 1020, uh, on a 1080p display, it would run it substantially faster. Just one of those things to be aware of. Uh, here is a sample map that was authored in it. And uh, what we could do is basically start adding things to our world. So for example, we got a number of different, uh, I'll call them tile sets over here. So if you wanted to put a Hamlet into our world, you can see a preview of it right there. We've got control over it. So I can hold the control key down and make it bigger or smaller. You can hold the shift key down and orbit it. And they basically just place it in the world. So boom, we just put uh, that Hamlet onto the map in that location. And we can do the same thing. There's a number of tools here uh, for doing things like creating islands. So I come over here, we'll do the uh, default landmass tool. And I can come down here and basically just start doing territory like so we'll close that off with a right click there you go so you see i have created a new landmass in the area i can also do the same thing for water tools so we've got uh sea control tools like so uh we could create sea areas or we could do coastal land in around it options you're going to see over here you've got a number of different settings here so i'm going to go to the like the maritime settings and we'll switch over and now you can see i've got different tools available so for example i could do a coastal outline uh, pick that tool, and then I could just basically go around the landmass I just created. Like so. And then close. And I just created it below. So what you can do actually is control your layering right here and what order things appear on, by the way. So you can move things up and down and so on. Uh, so you do have Z buffer control over it, or we could basically just recreate our land mass over top. We've also got control over a number of different uh, tile types that are available right here. Anything that has this little plus beside it, by the way, uh, means there's multiple options available. So when you're creating it here, you see I can hit tab and I'll rotate to the next option available. Uh, sometimes that's rotated. So I'm going to hit control, We'll scroll that down and we'll put this little mountainous light map on there. So what we're looking at right now, this is the default land tools. You see over here at the top, this is all the stuff that you plugged in or added on. So this is city building right here. And you're gonna see when I click something, all of the tools and all, so now we have a cities menu up here. So if you need to do city walls and contours and so on, you could do that way. Uh, we got a number of different symbol sets. So here you can see all of these tools changed right there. And then we got a number of different options right here. So I can go over here and pick the vehicular stuff. And then what you're gonna notice is we get uh, 
the symbols all populate down here. So as you're switching between all the various different add-ons that are available, your options and your tools change accordingly. So we'll go back to the, uh, this is the main mapping menu. And you're gonna see we get the various different tools. And again, we get the switching. So we want to do the maritime stuff, switch over there. Again, you get different sets of tools. You get completely different tiles available right here. So let's say you wanted to add some vegetation into your world, switch into the vegetation mode, and then same deal. These will all populate to show your vegetation options, and then your tools potentially will change over here. Over here, you've got just more baseline tools for doing uh, shapes and texts and so on in your world, free hand drawing and so on. And this is one style of map that I've showcased. By the way, you can switch between, uh, you can have orthographic projection. Uh, you've got a grid that you can turn on and off. They're not showing in this case. Now, I also have to tell you, I have only the barest understanding of this program because it is incredibly complicated. And at the same time, uh, there's some tooling in here. So for example, the moving process is just hideous. So there's some areas where the user interface could definitely be improved. So let's say I wanna go ahead and move something. I'll select the move tool here. Now I gotta pick the thing that I want to move. So now I do a drag like so, and I select around the thing that I created. And now I go, okay, do it. Now I click again. And now I move to where I want to go and I unclick. Now it doesn't draw every time. So after doing that, I have to come up here, press this button to update the map. And there we go. So uh, it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive. The switching between layers is a bit clunkier than I would like it to be, uh, but there is massive amounts of documentation in here for getting you up and going. And so far we've looked at one single kind of map. Let's show you the diversity of this guy. So we've got a bunch of examples here that you're going to have access to. So go here, you're gonna see Cosmologer, Cosmo, Cosmographer. This was another thing that you get as part of the add-on. And you're gonna see here, if you're into like Spelljammer or um, Traveler kind of maps, you could do those things there. But let's say you wanted to create uh, an FTL style game. Well, you can actually create starships here as well. It comes with tools for creating, all right, so no, don't save here. It comes with tools for actually creating uh, you know, you could create the FTL style ship here using all the tools. You can see here, you got a number of different tile sets available right there. You have tools here specifically for drawing the hull uh, and drawing the corridors and maps and doors inside of it. So when you switch between these various different things, you get a completely different set of tool sets. And then for each one, you get a various different sets of tile sets as well. So if you say here, you want weapons, you wanna add some weapon systems to your ship, you just click there. And now you've got a number of weapons built in. So if we need to add a torpedo, we could go ahead and add this torpedo in. So I'm gonna select the torpedo. And now obviously that's really small. So I'm gonna do a control. We'll scale that torpedo up like so. And now I'm gonna hold shift and we're gonna rotate it like so. And we could add torpedoes onto our ship like so. So you can create some really complicated style game maps from again, ship style here, world map we saw earlier on. And then of course you've got your standard um, OG style cities and so on. So here we're gonna go ahead and load up a city map. And you can see here, this was created using uh, the city tools. Here you see we've got a different set of tools. So we've got uh, top-down tiles for doing um, uh, buildings and such in our, so we've got these guys over here. Uh, we could go ahead and add in, I think it's this guy that we're gonna start with. Uh, you've got tools for creating uh, walls, you got tools for creating rivers, you got tools creating, so we go over here and we can just do default wall, we can just use straight out tools like that. And then boom, we can start adding walls in. Um, you got tools again for roads. And then you got this guy here, which is kind of like an everything tool, gives you access to all of the relevant tools. And here you can see in terms of the styles that are available, uh, there's a lot of them. So if you wanted to do more of a Call of Cthulhu style, you could do a Cthulhu style city map and emulate that particular line art style and so on. So really you can build just about any kind of map you want here. You could create, you know, um, Ultima four through six style city maps uh, pretty easily. Uh, as you saw from our very first example, we can create overland maps. Uh, we could create uh, spaceships and so on. And if you wanna create something from scratch, just come on in here, do a new. And then here you're basically choosing. So you start with a city, a dungeon, a floor plan, other overland maps and so on. So if you do say other, I uh, see so you say predefined template and then click, okay, is, is that one not gonna, other doesn't have any, all right? So let's do that. Something different, file, new, city, next. And here you see, you've got a number of different default templates to build your city on. So we do a hundred by 
Uh, so one kilometer by 800 meters city as your starting base. And then you can just basically start populating it. So here we've got a house, for example. Another thing to notice, we have color tools down the side. You'll notice the changes that it makes for the, the shapes that are available. So a lot of things have a, a primary and a secondary color that will change it accordingly. And then you can just basically go ahead and place it. That obviously was quite small. Uh, you can zoom in and out of the map, by the way, but I can also uh, click that guy. Mm. Control to scale, make it bigger. Come on, make it bigger, make it bigger, make it bigger. All right. So there we go. We can start placing houses in the world and so on. And again, pretty straightforward on the whole. Up here, you switch between your various different settings. So if you're in city building over here, if you wanted to do a spaceship instead, you switch over here to the, uh, what was that again? Cause, oh, Cosmog, I, I forget the exact word. And when you switch, you'll see all of the different settings that are available switch over here. By the way, you can mix and match. So this map style, uh, the default scale is it's for making very small maps, but you can basically start placing entities in the world. Again, hold down shift. You can orbit how those entities are created. Uh, like so, you've got tools here for snapping. Everything's got generally uh, a set of tools for doing ground level stuff and so on. Pretty neat tooling set on the whole available in here. Now, again, you're gonna find at times the user interface is a little bit rough. This is very much a product of the aughts and it shows, uh, but it's probably unique in what it actually does. And if you're using this for creating tabletop role-playing style maps, it's probably unmatched. And as you can see from this humble bundle, the, the collection of uh, tiles that you get access to is pretty staggering. And coincidentally, you can actually export these out and use them in other projects if you wish. So you could use this as basically a tile set for your own game engine work if you wished, or you could just basically go ahead and create something. So let's go back here uh, to one of the, the things we did earlier on. So let's go back to that spaceship. Like so, all right, so this is what you want. You wanna take it out of here. You basically go file, save as, and then here you can see, you can actually export things out as BMP, JPEG, PNG. You can uh, export a section of it out. You can export it as a DWG or a DXF file, which you actually, you could take a DXX file and import it into Blender and extrude it along an access. So there's quite a bit of functionality that you've got here in terms of your export that does make this, yes, very useful in fact for game development for a very specific style of game. Now do keep in mind, any of the logic side of things, like this is just presentation, so it's not gonna give you any ability to do any kind of game logic. You're still ultimately gonna need a game engine on the back end, but if this is the art style you're going for, this could definitely be a good starting point for a game development perspective. And again, this license does give you um, commercial access to it. It allows you to use their assets and textures ex in external programs as well. So you can look at this as a gigantic graphic asset pack and you just ignore everything else, even if you didn't want to use the software. And on that level alone, it's definitely worth picking up. There's a ton of features and functionalities. Of course, if this if this look and feel and aesthetic isn't what you're going for, obviously it's of no use to you. And then again, we've also got the Fractal Terrain 3. I checked this out. I don't see a lot of use for it. It's for creating world style maps. Um, so global trains and such using uh, fractals. Uh, and then you can also export those out over to Cartographer. Um, so that is another thing you get with this. Uh, the only downside I see with this bundle uh, is that it is Windows only. So uh, that is an issue. When you do get it, you get a number of um, redemption codes you redeem on their website, and then you can download directly from them. And you, you activate each thing with a key. Now, these things are all separate. And, well, not all separate. Some of these things like this one, this one, Cthulhu, and maybe this one, they're all as one pack. And then another set of these are as another pack. Uh, but it works out to about five or six different installs you got to do to get everything that you want here. Although if you're just using it for mapping tools and say sci-fi, you could install just this guy and then this one uh, and you're good to go. Oh, and probably that guy right there. And then you're good to go. Uh, but as you saw, all of these things basically plug in as drawers at the top here. And they give you a completely different set of tools based on which one you're using with a completely different set of tile maps for each one you switch between. And I'm really kind of touching on the surface here. You can do things like uh, hyperlink maps together. So one map drills into another map and so on. So if you're using this for actual uh, pen and paper um, online role-playing style map generation, there's a lot more functionality in there as well. Um, and then of course you got like macros and, and special add-ons and, and so on and so forth. And here's all the other stuff that we added in on top of it. Um, those are all available 
for you here right now. Uh, but again, you'll find that sometimes the user interface is a little bit chunky, uh, but the end result of what it creates, it's kind of a one of a kind program. And if what you saw looks of interest to you, the license is good. Uh, you can export it in formats that are very game engine friendly. Uh, it's it's a cool program. It's again, it's a little dated at times, uh, but it is continuously being updated. It comes with a ton of training materials to get you up and going. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube in terms of learning the, the functionality of this guy if you're interested. So hopefully you did find that useful. Do you, have you used car Campaign Cartographer? Do you like it? Is there an alternative that you would recommend more? Like I said, it's a pretty unique tool set to a certain degree. So let me know what you think of it. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.